Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Black Ops 2 In Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about auto center myths and how they affect your accuracy and recoil. Also, have a show update for you. I have to talk about the future of In Depth, but we're going to do that after we're done with the auto center myth busting or myth testing or confirming. Got a lot to talk about. Let's step right into it. The myth is, and this is the only myth that we're going to talk about today, enabling the auto center option improves your recoil. At least on the Xbox 360, you can set your console to have default options like invert aim, turn auto aim on, and, uh, always in turn on auto center and the myth is that if you enable auto center it will improve your recoil there are similar defaults that you can enable on the PlayStation 3 however I don't believe that you can on the computer this one actually has a pretty good theoretical basis auto center essentially returns your sight to center automatically and it sounds redundant but if you were to look up at the sky using a, a thumbstick for on the case of consoles and let go it'll instantly return your aim back to normal or not instantly it'll just drag it back down probably a quarter of a second if you look down uh, it'll instantly pull it back up to center. A lot of older first person shooters use this so people could automatically go back to headshot level. What this does, or could be doing in the game, is that when you shoot your gun, all the guns have vertical recoil, they kick up. The auto center is kind of an always down pulling force, which pulls down, and in theory they should kind of cancel each other out, but let's put that theory to the test. Doing this little bit of commentary live, I'm using a regular MP7, no attachments, nothing funny, shooting this wall. I actually saw somebody on Twitter put a sad face on the wall, make it say, why you always shoot me? But as you can see with MP7, we have high vertical recoil. Sometimes it'll go mostly up. It can drag left or right. Overall, it's not as accurate as what you would think. Definitely not as accurate as the MP7 from Modern Warfare 3. I'm going to go ahead and shoot this last side over here to give you kind of a feel for its recoil. Now we're going to be going into the Xbox guide. I'm primarily an Xbox player, and this was the source of the myth, so I thought it'd be good to test. You go over to settings, and you go to profile. Inside profile, you want to go down to game defaults. I'm actually looking for it. I use this tab so rarely. In this section, you want to go to the action. In the action tab, you want to go to the very bottom and turn on auto center. Sometimes you have to go into the auto center option just to make sure it's on. Back out, back out, let's go back. I don't know why I didn't just hit the guide button. So now my auto center is enabled, and as you can see, the recoil on this first test at least was somewhat worse. It didn't go to the side, but auto center is only supposed to affect your Y axis or your vertical movement. What you're seeing is basically the same thing you saw before, is that it has a, sim a similar kind of recoil pattern, but each set of shots is fairly random. That's the par for the course in Black Ops 2. I'm going to go ahead and stab J-Hub over here in the corner, pick up one extra scavenger pack, and we're going to test it again just to make sure it's not doing anything again each pattern each plot is different than the one before it it's uh, essentially random but it is following some set boundary or pattern and there's no difference I'm gonna go ahead and turn my auto center off because I'm gonna run the test again with a different weapon see here it is I'm looking for it I use, I'm just so not used to going in here I always go to preferences to appear offline or change voice through TV or something like that I'm not used to going into this action tab and turning it off the next weapon that we're gonna be testing is the AN 94 this is also a very popular one has high vertical recoil this is with the auto center off gonna shoot the wall again and what you see is that the recoil is mostly vertical but does have some side to side wobble similar to the mp7 but it won't drag way left and way right like it did I'm gonna go ahead and shoot three rounds with the AN 94 so you can kinda of get a feel for what it's gonna do and you can see the bounds of the recoil and then we're gonna open up the Xbox guide tab enable the auto center and see what it does when we turn auto center on let's see if I'm any faster at it this time because I've done it a time or two before profile gonna go down to game defaults yet again find that action tab go in here auto center at the bottom is off let's turn it on let's make sure that it's on go all the way in time to back out I usually play inverted too but that doesn't change anything and let's see if the recoil pattern is any different uh, shooting it seems to be slightly less vertical on that one that's just my my feel for it and I'm thinking that it's doing something but as you're gonna see on the other plots that's just kind of the randomness of the game that one is almost exactly the same as the last ones and this one's gonna have very little side to side recoil but highly vertical looks like a tower again they are fairly random but they do stay within set bounds and there's no clear improvement with the auto center feature so I like to think it's safe to say that the auto center myth is busted that changing the auto center does not uh, help your recoil at all and the funny thing is, what cracked me up about it, is that Black Ops 2 doesn't even have an auto center option. I checked my options just to make sure that it was turning on like it was supposed to, and I did not see that option in Black Ops 2. It's an option in some shooters, a very effective option, mind you, but not in Black Ops 2. So I really don't know where this myth started, how it propagated, or why it's in my inbox so often, but enabling the auto center feature does not improve your recoil pattern. 
Time for the show update. I need to talk about the future of Black Ops 2 in depth. I've been going at this for about five months now. I've reviewed every single weapon, primary, secondary, special, sniper. I've reviewed a lot of the equipment, about half of the perks, uh, a dozen different updates, uh, myths, versus sort of episodes. I've been doing a lot of different things, and I'm kind of running out of the technical nitty gritty. Even done some score streaks. Now, mind you, there is quite a lot left, but most of the things that I'm familiar with, that I know a lot about, that are easily testable, have already been done. The items that are left are, uh, let's say, trivial. They are not a lot of information out there about them or very hard to test or something like that So I'm going to be opening up the scope of in-depth We're going to be discussing broader subjects of Call of Duty gameplay here It's not going to be COD in-depth. COD in-depth was a different thing and it ran its course We're going to be doing this one in Black Ops 2 uh, One of the more broader subjects that I'm going to be discussing is maps I'm going to talk about that more in a minute It's going to be more subjective because when you open up a really broad uh, spectrum of subjects You do get more subjectivity in there It's not quite the same as just reviewing a weapon and it has a very hard finite numbers to it if we're talking about gunplay if we're talking about strategy and positioning it is going to be more subjective and because these topics are broader they're more mentally intensive there's more things to look up the show is going to be less frequent and I don't mean that I'm not going to upload it ever or I'm going to do it once a month but before I got into a really good habit where I could play with a gun I could master this gun in two days three days an afternoon if I had all afternoon I had all my presets for the show done so I could just punch in the numbers more or less and it would load up on on the screen and I could write in my information. It was a template and I got really good at mastering weapons really fast because that was the bulk of the show. Same thing with attachments. But now that is no more. I have to jump into a different pool so to speak, tread different water, learn different things, and the editing is going to get more complicated. So as a result the show is going to be less frequent. My goal is to still post it two to three times a week but not every day or every other day like I've been doing. Uh, hopefully it'll still be good. And speaking of good, the next episode I'm going to try to make my first map guide on grind. I play grind a lot. It's a map that I feel comfortable with, comfortable making a guide about. I am aware that T. Martin also does map guides and jump spots and his series is excellent and without trying to copy him or be a raw instinct or whatever, I intend to move into doing in-depth maps, but I'm going to focus more on the spawns and somewhat less on the jump spots and some of the things that he does. I want it to be a unique show and not copying anybody else, though unfortunately overlap is going to be almost unavoidable. And with that, that's the end of this episode. Episode. If you'd like to check out my previous episode on Bouncing Bettys versus Claymores, you can click the link on the left. It'll open in a new window. If you'd like to check out the next episode, which is going to be on the Grind Map Guide, you can click that, and it'll also open in a new window. As always, if you enjoyed the content, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.